I think for me, and, and something that definitely was a, played a major part of my experience in band was also my involvement with other, um, you know, other arts organizations. I think it's great that there are so many students who, um, you know, band is their major musical outlet or they're not music majors or, or what have you, that they found a way and a home for that part of themselves and that part of, you know, their, their personal self-expression through the band. Um, for me, it was always interesting because I had my, my band family and I also had um, my university singers family and, and both of those played incredibly prominent roles in my experience at the university and, and beyond. Those two groups of people are the people I've kept in touch with, I've been roommates with them, I've gone to their weddings, you know, those, those long-lasting relationships. But it was definitely interesting in, in, in college and as I lived that to see sort of the differences between um, those two ensembles and to try and balance demands on my time from both of them in different directors and different priorities and um, I don't think that it's a secret but it was definitely something that was I feel somewhat unique to my experience um, to try and, and balance those two you know time commitments and perspectives and groups of, of people both of whom felt like family um, and I think the, the net takeaway was that more is always better in that regard and that if you have the time or the interest in whatever other groups you and interests you pursue, you know, to feel like you have two families and multiple homes or wherever, you know, within a, an organization like college, that's just awesome. Um, and that, that, I think, certainly was something that was interesting for me. There are certainly a lot of people at the university who spent a lot of time trying to engage in professional development and building their resumes and learning as much as they can. And a lot of the other um, activities around grounds, uh, many of which I was a part, there's, um, there's a certain amount of maneuvering and uh, dare I say maybe even posturing. Um, but I never, I never really saw any of that going on at, at the band. Uh, and so I didn't feel like you had to put on some different version of yourself mm -hmm. to come to band practice. Uh, as Marie mentioned earlier, you know, there's only so much dignity you can maintain when you're wearing these shorts and sweating and you're marching <laughs> in a parade yelling silly things. Um, and I, I think that, that that's good to have a community uh, that can be open and honest with each other in that, in that way. Being comfortable with interacting with large groups of people. <laughs> um, that's something you have such a problem with, dear. Well, clearly. <laughs> you know, I, um, like I was, I guess like, relating to what I was saying in, in sort of the previous topic of conversation, you know, just all of sort of, I guess, the, the soft skills that, you know, people very rarely would uh, pinpoint you for or, or ask for in a job description, but, you know, your ability to get along with others, your ability to work under pressure. Um, you know, your ability to dance thriller. That is a very important job skill and skill that I've carried with me throughout my life. It's true. It's and really true. critical. <laughs> you know, but, but all of those interaction skills and those skills about you know, responsibility and organization, um, you know, those are definitely things that I've, that I've carried with me. And, and also relating back to something that you were touching on early, I, I think instilling a continuing love of music and just reinforcing what a, a powerful component of your life that that can be to to appreciate it and have uh, the importance of having an avenue for expression. Um, I, I always get excited on you know Facebook or catching up with friends or reunions or whatever to, to talk with other people who have been involved in either the CMB or other you know artistic ventures and to hear that they're still continuing to, to make that a part of their lives um, and to actively pursue you know playing, dancing, singing, painting, whatever it is uh, that they do. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, and, and I think that that, you know, four years or however much time you've spent in the band, you, you can't come away with it with anything less than a, a strong appreciation for, you know, the role of the arts and the power of, you know, creating something yourself and sharing that with others and the importance of that. I think maybe the influence on me has been a little more subtle because, um, and I, I, I'm sure that this is true for me as well, I, I already knew all those things beforehand. You know? I already, oh, wow. I already had a, a tremendous Excuse love me. for music, and I'm not suggesting anything otherwise for my lovely wife here. Um, but as I touched on it earlier, I mean, I think probably the main legacy of, that the band had for me is that from the first moment I stepped on grounds, I was uh, embraced by a family of, of people 
who were interested in my success. Mm -hmm. um, and the consequences of, of feeling like you can do what you wanted to do and feeling supported uh, from day one of your time on grounds, um, I, I can't imagine how different my university experience would have been for were it not for the fact that I had this sort of supportive backbone uh, of the band uh, to rely on. And, you know, I ended up, um, you know, going and doing a bunch of different things at the university. Um, and as I mentioned, I, did, I didn't do the band my fourth year, but, but even when I stopped doing the band, it, it was still there. And the, the sense of community and belonging that I got from the band, um, even related to things outside the band, were so very valuable to me. Uh, and, and I really can't, can't repay that debt. And so I, I think I think that's that's point one. The second thing that I've really taken away from from the band is um, how to be involved with music uh, in in sort of a, a variety of different capacities. Uh, some people, and I included myself in, in this number until I joined the CMB, you know, pursue music as as an art and as something that sort of allows you to uh, transcend the the daily bores of human existence. And that's certainly one sense in which music is a tremendous gift uh, to, to people. And I think that's an important role for music to play, but it also requires uh, quite a lot of time and dedication, and it's something that can take over your life um, if you pursue it in a serious way. But there's also another thing that, that music offers, and it's not to help you transcend life, but to help you live it more fully mm -hmm. and to, um, to sort of enjoy life as it comes. And um, seeing, uh, being able to be involved with music in that capacity, uh, with the CMB, which is a, I would say, a much less musically rigorous experience than perhaps one of the symphony orchestras, but um, a much more immersive experience personally. Um, and the friendships that you develop, uh, the spouses that you find. Oh, and uh, the plural. Well, <laughs> you better it down uh, You know, those are, those, are, those are the real legacies of of the Capital Marching Band experience for me, and um, and I think that that's a, that's a unique gift that the Marching Band can offer, and so that's definitely mm -hmm. stuck with me uh, during my time at the university and, and in the in the years afterward. Mm -hmm. The most obvious answer is that it's a lot bigger. Size, yeah. Um, you know, when I uh, when neither Maria nor I did Marching Band fourth year, we decided to you know, prioritize other things, and um, I think that that was the right decision, certainly for me. Um, it was very. It was a tough decision uh, not to do it, um, but you know, because of the time commitments and I was writing a thesis, I decided it was it wasn't right. And so I, I left the band, you know, happy, you know, and really proud of having been a part of it. But also, it was time for a break. I've been doing marching band pretty consistently since I was like 14 years old, and it was it was time for a break. Um, and I felt that way most of, most mostly through my fourth year. Um, and but then recently, when I've come back for games. Um, and you go and you see the band and it's so large. I heard the statistic, I think, and maybe someone was making this up, but I think Maria told me that there are, there are more people in the band's leadership this year than there were in the entirety of the band when it first took the field. Yeah. Um, which was pretty astounding uh, to think that in uh, you know, 10 short years um, we, could, we could flourish in such a way. Um, but the sound is so, mm -hmm. so big and it's so good. Um, as a member of the band, you felt immersed, and it was really exciting to be a part of that. But when you're in the stands, um, experiencing the band, you know you're you're hit head on by that wall of sound. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe it's just because I'm a band guy myself, but I don't see how anyone could fail to be thrilled by that. And um, so seeing the band's um, musical uh, gifts grow. Uh, over the last couple of years has been really exciting to watch. Um, you know, I've gone to football uh, games in each of the last few seasons mm -hmm. since graduating, and each year um, the band is, is not just bigger, but also better, which is nice to see that kind of development. And um, obviously the band changes in composition every year, but um, I really think it's, a, it's sort of a, a sustaining culture in the band where people, at, people expect a lot of each other. So it's been kind of so, nice to see the band get so much bigger and uh, and so much louder. I don't know much about what goes on inside the band uh, these days, so I, I can't really compare what it, what the student experience must be like uh, today as it was back in my day. Um, but whatever it is, they're doing something right because it sounds it sounds great. I'm pretty I'm pretty picky about this nonsense, so 
Uh, it, it sounds really good. Wait, you, I'm sorry, you picky? You have I particular the thought. things? Perish the thought, indeed. But, right. um, but yeah, and also, I mean, it's nice to see the band, you know, um, bring in exciting new acts. You know, they're interesting soloists, interesting concepts. Uh, the creative juices are still flowing uh, over there at the Hunter Smith Band Building. That dancing man, history of the dance, I think. The evolution of dance. The evolution of dance. I mean, that's just a, a really interesting idea. And I don't know who thought of that, but whoever was should get a raise. Um, uh, checks in the mail. Um, so that was really, it's just really kind of cool to see, not just the largeness of the band and the quality of the sound, but that it's not just the greatest hits of the CMB every year, just replaying the same thing. There's continuing creative energy going on there. Uh, and it's nice, it's nice to see the band grow in that way. I think it's also exciting to see, I guess, some of the things that have been talked about as sort of hopes or dreams for the band, like the band building, you know, come to fruition. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're a little farther out years wise, and we've just come back to Charlottesville, but, you know, through Facebook or talking with other folks who maybe have a, a stronger relationship with some of the current students, hearing about, you know, the difference that the, the that ongoing application of resources has and having your own building and having your own space. Um, and just, you know, it's, it's great to see the band continue to flourish and continue to receive the kind of support it takes to um, make all that possible. You know, the the kids and you know the the organization itself, I think, are certainly deserving of such support, and they continue to prove, you know, that if given the opportunity and to do so and, and the resources to do so, that they'll they'll shine and they'll achieve and they'll exceed everybody's expectations and just you know put out a wonderful musical product, put out a wonderful entertainment product, and, and be great liaisons um, for the university and, and you know, the kind of quality and excitement that's going on in the program. That's actually a great point. Um, it's a pretty salient difference between uh, the experience of the current students, what I imagine that experience is, uh, in contrast with our own. When I got to the band in, in 2006, my impression was that this is a, a pretty swank operation. I mean, we. Mm -hmm. I still have yet to buy a t-shirt because I received so many free band <laughs> t-shirts uh, since 2006. Um, I say that as a way of explaining the fact that the band, you know, was generously resourced. I talked to my friends who went to other universities and were involved in, in very distinguished and long-standing marching band programs, and uh, very few of them had the kind of backing from the university uh, that that our band did and and does and not just on a not just on a monetary level but i think also from a you know an investment level yeah. um, and, and of I, interest yeah. and i think that's i think the university gets back a lot more than it than it puts in so i think that's a good deal for the university but it's certainly a good deal for the students it's very nice to be in an organization um that that you feel is important to the life of the university and i think that i think that's what dr pease does very well um, Dr. P is a great um, advocate for the band, mm -hmm. uh, and not just for the band, but um, for the importance of music in a university community. And so, uh, seeing um, some of the things that he's been able to do as far as uh, fundraising and uh, and making sure that the band has a prominent role to play in the life of the university, um, the band is lucky to have uh, somebody who's able to be persuasive in that way and somebody who is interested in, in getting what's best for the students mm -hmm. and um, and so I think that's that's great and that's something that's only grown since our time here I mean if we didn't have to huddle in some kind of like weird actually I guess they still have at Carsville Field you know there's just that small interest in instrument storage building that was really the only permanent space that we had we had to run around over to U-Haul you and know that and Old Cavill and um, Having a permanent home for the band, um, I think, would have been would have made our experience there even better. And so the fact that the band has that now, um, it's hard to overstate um, the benefits of that. So I'd say that's, that's a pretty big change mm -hmm. since the time we were here. And I guess, and I don't know so much if it's a change or just that I'm glad to see that it's continued the, the strong presence of student leadership, um, and that that students have the opportunity to really um, take ownership for for something at their time in the university and and. Uh, be able to, um, you know, take on roles and responsibilities that they may not have had before, and really continue to grow as as leaders and as individuals, as well as just musicians or as members of a band or, you know, students learning factual knowledge. But I think a a big component of you know the the university experience 
and the higher education experience is the chance to develop yourself as an individual as well. And, and I think that the opportunities that are afforded to students through their participation in the band, um, you know, in, in working with groups of people who have different priorities or different views or different backgrounds and, you know, all of the logistical work and uh, planning and execution and, and hard labor that it takes to bring off you know, band events or, or traveling or, you know, whatever the task at hand may be, um, having the opportunity to, to develop those skills and apply them, you know, over the course of years, um, I'm really glad to see that, that student leadership still appears to be a really strong um, um, facet of the band and something that's still a priority for them. Which I think is also, I mean, I think that's a credit to a culture that prevails generally at the university, uh, one of student self-governance. Mm -hmm. And we spend a lot of time talking about that, and there are certainly places where it flourishes throughout grounds, but I think that uh, definitely one of those places is, mm -hmm. is the band. And, you know, the idea that, you know, as a non-music major uh, or, or, you know, as somebody who's not actually pursuing a career in music, you could be handed leadership of a section of 30 people and said, you know, go rehearse this number with people and, until they get it right. It really, it, it asks a lot of the student leaders who are charged with those kinds of responsibilities. Um, and they consistently uh, live up to right. it. Right. Yeah. And, and, but that's the, you know, I don't think that it would be asked if it weren't, if it weren't attainable. And I think that, um, you know, Mr. Cook and, and, and Mr. Pease and, and the whole staff have always been really good about, you know, trusting the students, uh, which is empowering. Uh, it's empowering for students and for musicians to be able to do that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, and take and take sort of responsibility for yourself and for your section, uh, which is good because, you know, the band is very large and it would be hard to give individual uh, attention uh, to everybody if it were just the directors. So I think it works out well for everybody. And that's something that hasn't changed mm -hmm. uh, since our time here.